All right, we are live. Welcome to Paddle Geek. I'm your host, Brandon Swanson. I'm joined today by Gearbox president, Raphael Filippini. Um, thanks, Raphael, for joining us on this show. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you for having me. I'm glad yeah. to be here, and I'm glad for the opportunity. Yeah, so we're, we'll just kind of let people filter in just a little bit. Um, apologies to those watching the rebroadcast, but you know, we'll give them a couple seconds. So we got one one person so far. Say hello if you're joining us. Drop in the comments uh, how things sound, how things look. Uh, we really appreciate that feedback from you guys. So um, let us know how things are are looking and sounding, and say hello in the comments. We'd love to give you a shout out. And um, so yeah, so we've got Deke Marshall on. Says hello. Hi Deke. How are you? <laughs> So, and I think Deke had a question for you. We'll get to a little bit later on. So he was pretty excited to hear about it. Okay. Uh, Terry Hartley's on, says, hello, sound is good. Awesome. We'd love to hear that feedback. Dave Mullen from Massachusetts, this is here. Hey, buddy. So now they're rolling in. We got about 12. Um, if you guys could hit the share button, we would really love that and appreciate it. Um, you know, put it on the Pickleball Underground and Pickleball Forum. Uh, help us get our viewers up. We'd love that. So. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thanks for joining us tonight. All right, so let let's let's get to it. We got we got some people here live now. Um, so Raphael, uh, I just want to get a little background from you, starting out on the history of Gearbox, how you guys got started, and um, you know where you're going now within pickleball. Uh, but tell us a little bit about the origins of Gearbox. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, hello everybody. My name is Raphael Filippini. I'm uh, currently reside in San Diego. I've been uh, here in San Diego for many years. Um, uh, Gearbox was established in 2007. Uh, we are a, a composites uh, sports brand um, focusing uh, in technology, trying to really elevate the performance of products. Now, we began with racquetball. We went into other racket sports like uh, squash. We do uh, badminton, racquetball was, like I said, it's kind of our main start because my in my background, I, I played racquetball professionally for several years. So kind of married the two things. And then with the design engineering and all that it, in my background, more uh, got involved with the composites. Um, early on, I was introduced to them in, in, um, in the Marine Corps, actually. Um, and I, I was one of the few individuals, there was two of us in the Marine Corps back then who uh, were sent to schools for composites on F-18 and the, uh, the Cobra, the, the whiskey attack helicopter. So um, we sort of got introduced to composites, really loved it, sort of changed my career path and got involved more with the engineering side. So uh, then from there, I, I played a lot of racquetball, it was on the, um, uh, the Marine Corps racquetball team, which then led me to pursue more uh, playing right after I got out of the, the service and, and school and um, actually played for the university on a scholarship for, for racquetball. And then um, I, I my career then began with another brand. Uh, I was the engineer for that brand uh, for about 13 years, I left the company and started Gearbox um, with the ideas that I, and I consider myself an inventor um, first of all, and, and then, you know, a sports enthusiast and an engineer. So I uh, sort of married all those things together and, and it's a passion of mine to get out there and I, I see products and I look at them and I'll, I'll, I'll take a look and say, God, you know, I, we can, do, we can improve that. Uh, there's uh, particularly with composites there. Um, I'll get into composites a little bit later. Um, not, not too technical, but just more of a background on them, but Composites in general are um, carbon fiber right now, extremely light, weight to strength ratio is incredible in the design uh, characteristics and inability that it gives us to to create products. It's, it's tremendous. So um, the trick there, though, yeah, there, there's, you know, you got to know how to uh, use and, and, and work with with composites to get the results that, that you're looking for. But anyway, once you you understand it and you, you you build and work with it. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, so lots of combinations, sure. and and for and that's what really drives me. So I look at an industry, and we go in, and 
say, hey, how can we improve those products? Just like you know, m most brands that, that are in pickleball today, um, that's what they're doing with the knowledge they have. So uh, yeah. pickleball began with wood paddles, right? And then they went into uh, maybe some earlier composites. Then they went into the honeycomb structures. And now we're uh, gearbox, we're pushing into a molded, and, and I'll explain that a little bit later. There's a big difference between just a carbon fiber uh, paddle versus uh, air uh, pressurized internally unidirectional molded paddle. That's a, that's a whole mm -hmm. different animal. Yeah, <laughs> or sure. paddle, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that I think that would be a great, you know, just visual starting off. You know, like uh, Deke's question actually was about he wanted to know more about your solid span technology, which is something completely different. Um, you actually have a patent on it, um, yes. and you can kind of uh, go over that. But just maybe, maybe if you could even just like start to show people what you're talking about with like the traditional honeycomb paddle. I mean, like I would say what uh, ninety nine percent of paddles on the market pretty much have that that honeycomb structure inside. That's a polymer, and then some kind of facing material, and it's just sandwiched together, really, really glued glued up. Basically, is that correct? Mm -hmm. that, that is correct. And I would say all the brands that are out there, with the exception of Gearbox, all have mm -hmm. a honeycomb core, uh, with, with the exception of ours, which is a, um, a sol our solid span technology. And I'll explain what that is. But that is a, a rib structure inside that internally that we build. First, let me show you. I've got a, one of our we, – we also make a honeycomb paddle, and I don't want to um, – you know, there's an evolution in the way that things work. So – First, there was wood, and wood, it still plays great today, and, um, you know, it has its own characteristics. However, there, it's got its limits, too. So some of the limits are you're going to have a very heavy paddle. Um, you can't make it uh, flex in certain areas. So it's a very uniform sort of structure. So your design uh, capabilities are, are limited to perhaps the type of wood, you know, whether you use maple, maybe some – you know, oaks or, or lighter uh, pine and different types of, uh, so that, and that's how you're gonna get different playing characteristics, right? And then maybe how you you build up your plies, you do a five ply, six ply, et cetera, too. Um, and then the shape. So then the, you're, that's it. So you're limited to that. Then it comes around, uh, then honeycomb comes around a few years later and the, you people experimented with the core. So they had aluminum cores um, and a honeycomb. Essentially, it's a sandwich structure, right? So you have two surface plies and I have a piece of honeycomb in here. So a honeycomb essentially are this is it's plastic and you can envision maybe like straws that you, you cut at this height and then you glue them side by side. <laughs> so and then uh, but these have a more of a hexagonal shape and um, so you sort of join them uh, and, and build the sheet. And then what happens, you've got now the honeycomb and you glue uh, either carbon fiber, you can glue um, uh, uh, carbon fiber, fiberglass, Kevlar, and those types of materials. And essentially then you glue the bottom half. So then now you create this, this structure, right? Which is a sandwich structure. Yeah. Um, and that's your paddle, and that that usually goes all the way to the bot to yeah. the base of the, so the handle the of, the of the paddle. The paddle that we cut. Um, yeah. So again, you have the the plastic core inside, which the most popular one today is the polypropylene, and now that you know, it goes up to eleven millimeters, sometimes thirteen. This one, as I recall, I believe it's nine nine millimeters. But then you have your your surface plies, and that goes around. Um, you shape, you, you cut the, the shape, and this is sort of what, um, now what kind of with gearbox, you can see we mold our, our handle together. Some will glue wooden pieces and then uh, put the, the end cap. So ours, um, we actually do not build a sheet. We, we individually build each one of these uh, paddles. So we, we cut out the shape. So then we can reinforce different areas of the paddles as we build our layout. So, and, and okay. contrary to that, when you build a sheet, you can't reinforce certain areas. So you're kind of, when you have a sheet, you're just trying to maximize the number of paddles you can cut out on a four by eight That's sheet. We, yeah. we, we actually, we cut our all our plies. Um, 
Sorry. No, no. So here's That's kind right. of like a face ply. And we cut these out and we build the, the different layers. And then we can put or, or add reinforcement plies, uh, particularly the throat area, generally a place where a lot of paddles break in the corners, et cetera. So we can yeah. manipulate the, the layout. So um, even from there, I, I would say with Gearbox, we even on our honeycomb paddles, where there's a lot of technology. And sure. uh, one thing I always say, we're, we're at events, I'll, I'll put our, our $75 paddle up against any uh, hundred $150 paddle that's out there in performance wise. And we do have a, an array of other models that we haven't released yet, but we, we will in, in time uh, because there is that mark, that part of the market that we cannot ignore. Now, yeah. you know, why did we get into the sport? Well, I want to push technology. I, I, I want to obsolete the honeycomb core. Um, I want to take carbon fiber and really build some, technology. Um, so now what can we do with carbon fiber uh, and, and core structures? I'll, I'll kind of, so our paddle, and I've cut a, a paddle out here. So we've got sort of the full paddle and I've cut sections. Um, our paddle. There you go. There yeah, you go. Terry Hartley wanted you to do that. So. One of the first questions, right? <laughs> Sorry about yeah. that. Okay. So uh, with our paddles, we, we actually have Four, four structures. So I'm gonna just make it a little clear. We have a frame structure that goes around the paddle all the way through. The handle is molded all at, as, as one piece. And then we have the, this rib structure. You can see all these ribs are uniformly uh, yep. lined up. So what we do is we essentially build, and I'm gonna take this down for a second. We take a, a carbon fiber sheet like this, we roll it around a mandrel, it's called a mandrel, and then we make these rectangular tubes like this. And what, then what we do is we lay them side by side, so kind of like how my fingers are, these tubes will run the length, and then they're joined together, there, um, and then we, we apply the surface uh, structure, then if you can kind of get into the edge, you can see there's a frame that goes around so this whole part is the frame, each one of the ribs, the, and the both surface plies. So what this does, it gives us a really strong structure. And I'll show you some. So I have the center piece of the paddle. And what I could do here is I can bend this. You see this, this curve? I can bend it. I can create all this. So there's the reason I can do that, because the structure in between here is not tied in. However, when I, when I put this structure into play, I will not be able to bend this piece at all. So that helps tighten the uh, the whole perimeter of the paddle where I can't really bend it or I can bend it in certain sections depending on the design. Um, so, but we can keep the the um, the area where, where, or the sweet spot area, we can make that sort of work and, and, um, and create a more lively paddle or increase the size of the sweet spot. So we can manipulate the material around the perimeter here uh, to put a, a livelier material versus just the sweet spot itself. So what we try to do there is make it a larger, uh, more uniform sweet spot throughout the paddle, both yeah. the width and the, the length of the paddle. I noticed, uh, just to stop you for a second, you know, because I was using the... Uh the GX6 control series. And one thing I noticed right away, you know, I've had a, that um, shape or, or at least uh, dimension and the sweet spot on it was much longer, you know, top to bottom than any other paddle that I'd used. And I, you know, I kind of chopped that up. It made sense to me, you know, with solid span tech that's running vertically, that that would be the case. But, you know, down by the throat area, which usually is very dead on a, on honeycomb paddles that I've used of that type of dimension, it was much livelier there. Um, and so that, to me, that opened up that shape, you know, because normally the sweet spot is out far from your hand only, and this is dead, right. but this had, you know, if I'm blocking and it's closer to my hand, um, just playability wise, that was a big advantage of that shape in the GX6 series. But um, just as my observation. Um, as a yeah, no, and it's very true. We actually designed to that. Um, if we go back to the honeycomb structure, uh, this is what we call a, 
homogenous structure or, or one one sort of um, uh, sorry my phone's going <laughs> oh, dude, I take yeah, that off popular guy yeah. so the um, the structure because you have the face ply and the plastic you can't really change how it plays from the center to the edges it, you're you can a little bit by adding just some plies here, but it's not gonna change how this paddle bends back and forth this way, the bending or torsion. You're, you're limited to torsion just in the throat area. Um, with our paddles, uh, if you can, I'll try and explain. You see this little piece of carbon fiber here. There's probably thousands of strands, probably maybe hundreds of thousands of strands actually in this little section. This is roughly running at, at 30 degrees, um, 30 degrees here. So then we have to, if I peel this back, you're going to see we have a positive angle and we have to have a negative angle on the other side. So the reason we do that is to keep it from, from torquing. So if we were to mold it and only had one direction going, this could almost flip and stay. So an opposing angle helps keep the ply straight. But mm. the point is, we can go from zero degree, which means I have carbon fiber running this way. I can go to uh, 10 degrees here, uh, 19 degrees, 30, 45, 60, and 90. Each one of those angles have different play characteristics, different bending moments too. So this one is at 40, this one's 30, it'll be a little bit stiffer. So it'll be stiff this way a little bit but I can actually twist it very easy. If I were to grab a, um, a zero degree ply, let's see, this is now at zero. This is actually very stiff here because I'm, I'm bending the fibers here where, where when I rotate them, there's less bending this way. That, that mm. kind of makes sense. And if I went 90, then there's really no resistance whatsoever. It's really the fibers just sort of bending in between and the resin really the one that's holding it. So it's very, very soft. Now, so when we design these, uh, the paddles, that's what we really take into consideration is the shapes, the how it's going to perform the length of the paddle. So we have this curvature here. We have the curve coming down into the handle. Then we also have these other curves that, that are going, you know, around the paddle. So, so with these, these structures, uh, we take, if you, you know, the, the 3D shape of it, and then we have to apply the different loads, how the ball is going to affect the paddle in different places. So we know that when you hit a ball way out at the edge out here, um, it's going to, you're going to have very limited or, or the, the rebound or the uh, coefficient of restitution or the energy going back into the ball. Mm -hmm. Because once it hits here, the paddle wants to sort of absorb some of that energy. So then the ball doesn't jump off as much. So what we do is liven the perimeter with, with lower angles. Hmm. So the ball response will jump off. So in the areas where normally the paddle is dead in a traditional uh, honeycomb paddle, we change the materials, we change the structure to provide more energy in those areas or return oh, wow. energy to the ball. So that's how that, that works. And is that, are those, those pieces is that the is that the rib structure those the it, it's all of it um, because okay. we have plies that go along the edge in here um, I'll have another cutout this one's a little bit crude guys just warning but <laughs> but it does show the multiple plies so you can and this is an older rib structure so you can see the ribs that are uh, running the length there's this is a face ply we, I sort of peeled it back there's some plies down in here in the throat area, and then some of the, the frame plies down in here. So all of these, and, and I kind of tore into this so it looks kind of ugly, but, um, but so you can see the inside. kind of a peek through the inside of yeah. all the different layers. And each one of these does have, and this is what it would look like on the other side. You wouldn't really see all the different layers, but here we, again, kind of peeled back so you can see the different layers going down into into the core so there's there's actually hundreds of layers to build this paddle mm. in fact I, I do have a little this is our map <laughs> um, it's kind of fun just to show so each one would be like this would be the the frame layer uh, different layers that would um, 
go around like say okay this is the layer that's going to go around the head so this is the center line of the of the racket right here so left side right side and then we we kind of turn it so anyway this is just a cute little map to show all the different flies the location this is how we build the core so all these different pieces go in there and each one of these are very specific instructions of where each each piece should lay along the uh the paddle yeah to, to build the entire so so really what you just i mean that to me that just says you're like Raphael is actually the paddle geek like i just <laughs> i in name but like that that graph it, it means very little to me other than i see the comp, it, like the complexity that goes into it and the layers and the just all you know what yeah. you're talking about it is very is very um intentional there's a lot of intention behind, behind uh, to all areas of the paddle is exactly so each one of these areas is going to allow the paddle you have uh, you know you have your x y and z coordinates right the depth mm -hmm. so in this case in this paddle when you have a force the, with the ball hitting it here it's going to bend back this way right so it's going to want to bend the paddle and then when, when you hit off center it's going to want to rotate it this way and when you hit at the very top it's going to also push it back so it's going to so this thing's always wanting to to rotate unless you hit it in the very sweet spot then everything moves back together right and that's the, the center of percussion or the center of gravity then that means everything's going to move without rotation in the same way so but that happens not as often as we'd like <laughs> so yeah uh, so then we have to design to prevent the torque to prevent you know as much um flex or we could actually design to give more flex um and, and not necessarily flex but absorb more energy from the ball so in our current line we have our gx6 and our gx5 um, and then we have control and power so the difference in control and power is the layup this little map that i showed earlier is going to be the same with the exception of some flies we're going to change the fiber angles uh, maybe to higher angles so the paddle absorbs more energy or and in that way when the ball hits the paddle uh, on the on the control series or the softer paddle it absorbs the energy and the ball therefore doesn't rebound or jump off uh, quite yeah. as fast so when we change fiber angles for example on the power series and we stiffen some of the angles then the ball jumps off the page a little quicker Yeah, my my cutout. I didn't bring one. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. I so watched. Cutout. I've got a. I've got them handy. So, whoops, wrong way. <laughs> so this is this is the Joey. Oh, this one. Ah, this one. <laughs> sorry, yeah. it's flip flopped and my brain can't handle it. So this is the <laughs> Joey signature series. I can't even rotate it right now. Um, <laughs> and that's that's the power series that you're talking about, and this is the control series GX. These are both the GX six. With the longer handle and um, yeah. used to my cat, my I sorry, this looks ugly because I took an overgrip off of it that I was using and went back to the base grip. So sorry about that. Um, but a little bit longer handle and elongated shape uh, or dimensions to it as well. So um, anyway, just to give people a visual on what you're talking about in terms of the actual. Like, yeah. So so you can see on your uh, you have the power. You got, you got the raw paddle. So yeah. Yep. Yeah, the, the, the control and the power, if you look at the mold and the shape, they're molded exactly the same, except what we do is we change the that map that we, uh, in the design, uh, for one to absorb more energy and one to give more, more power or more energy back into the ball. And again, we do that by, remember, these fiber angles, we change that angle to lower angles or higher angles depending on what we want um, that paddle to do. So that's how we essentially we, we achieve it. Then another, uh, you know, I'm, all, I'm asked a lot of times, well, hey, I, I've got a carbon fiber um, mm. cone paddle. What's different about yours, right? So um, again, I wanna stress that the difference is 
this is a sandwich material. So you essentially take a core and you glue a surface to it and we glue another surface to it. And then uh, a lot of times it's in a sheet and then you just cut it out in the shape that you want. And, and then we take uh, a rubber edge um, and then that gets glued to the edge of the paddle like this. It, it's an okay, um, you know, for, for pickleball where it was and where it is today, I mean, this is a decent structure. What I'm saying now is like, okay, let's take pickleball to a whole new level. What can we do with being able to control every inch of the paddle in the way it flexes, the way it torques, the way it, it, it feels? So then we can begin and design some very unique things. Um, in pickleball, I feel it got stuck a little bit um, with the honeycomb paddles. And, and, and you'll see when they first started out, they were a little bit thinner. Now they're getting quite, you know, much thicker. Um, and from my perspective, um, you know, they're, they're promoting it uh, in a way that it's more stable and it, you want to, you know, more a thicker paddle for more control. That's not true. Um, perhaps with honeycomb it is. But when you get into composites, we can build a very thin paddle like this, get rid of that rubber edge, create a very stable frame because we can weigh, we can add materials to the perimeters. We can add materials. Um, you talked about having a, here's kind of, kind of a blank paddle, but you know, like on a honeycomb paddle, an eight and a half ounce paddle versus our GX5 or GX6 8.5, Ours is going to feel much lighter because the paddle, we have more weight in the middle. We don't weigh it so much at the top. Why? Because we can take all those plies. We can actually place the plies wherever we want. So we don't need to build such a heavy paddle. So they're limited when they're, um, when they're using just the standard honeycomb shape or uh, construction. Basically, yes. they're, they're at the whims of their shape. For the most part, in terms yeah. of the bank, having what balance they're going to have with it. Absolutely. And then the um, because they're, they're sheets, they cannot manipulate each different section of the sheet. So they're just cutting out the number of plies or layers that they have. So you can't really just say, well, hey, I want to reinforce the top. Well, they can't do that when you're building a sheet. You can do a little bit more when, when you build them individually like we do. Hmm. But you're only limited to the surface. You can't do sure. anything with the structure in between. With our gearbox paddles, we have that structure in between. So we can manipulate each one of these ribs. Is In fact, the length of the rib is, let's say, this, this sheet, right? I can make this upper part one angle, this middle part a different angle, and the bottom half another angle. So in, in this would be the length of the rib running this way. So I can have different angles going throughout the, the yeah. length of the paddle. So that gives me different flex or different uh, yeah. play characteristics. Or I can use uh, carbon fiber at the top, maybe uh, uh, an aramid or a um, uh, uh, poly uh, uh, <laughs> a glass fiber in the middle, uh, or I can change different materials and, and overlap them. So it'll give me different... Uh, percussions different sound uh, throughout the paddle it'll have a different feel maybe if i hit the top near the middle and the bottom mm -hmm. uh, so there's all kinds of combinations that we that we're able to do and we can manipulate like i said every single one of these ribs the face plies and the and the frame structure nice um so i had a question that i think is a is a good time for it now okay. uh rob rosen wants to know how does the construction differ between the 7.8 and the 8.5 series okay um then we get into we go back to our plies so this ply uh we call uh what, what's called a faw fiber aerial weight so we take a, a square meter um you know you take a square meter and the number of Plies or, or fibers that we put in in that, that square meter, um, we can make it a little bit thicker or, or sort of make it more dense or, or, or stretch the fibers and make it less dense. So the FAW, it's called, we can go from 
70 to 140 to 10 multiples of 70s or we can do multiples of that uh, so we can sort of add more fiber or less fiber so the area is still the same right when we cut it out but if yeah. i if i take 20 30 percent of the fiber away then i get a lighter structure it's still going to behave because it's very strong going to behave the same but now we can lighten the the, the structure so essentially both of these, the, the 7.8 and the 8.5, have the same map. Yep. With the exception, we changed the, the FAW, uh, and then we reduce the overall weight of the same map structure that we that we design. And and and, and when we design, we actually first design the lowest weight or the, the lower weight because then it's easy to just build up. Um, yeah, because we with the lower weights, we're going to make sure we pass all our tests, structural tests, play tests. Once all that happens, then it's really easy to just build up more material. Yeah. From that. So uh, someone had a question about like the accuracy, like in terms of weight, like how what what is your tolerance basically for these paddles? Because you say you don't say, <laughs> you know, no, other manufacturers don't don't usually say yeah. this is an eight. Point five. You guys even started. Right. I remember when you first had your 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 first like gearbox paddles. That the seven eight nine. Some of the seven eight nine. Mm -hmm. It was because there were seven eight and nine ounces, and that was <laughs> that's pretty, right. I thought that was right. a pretty bold we'll play can, at the time. Can, so I'm gonna see if I can zoom in here. But you see our tolerance right in here: two hundred and twenty-one grams plus or minus three grams. There's twenty-eight right. grams in one ounce. <laughs> so okay, translate uh, that to to point. <laughs> whatever else uh, we're talking about 7.8 ounces plus or minus less than one tenth of an ounce okay so these are going to be very uniform that's why we when we say 7.8 it's going to be 7.8 7.9 7.7 7 .7, but that's essentially our tolerance it's going to be dead on every time because we'll go back to this ply this ply you see how it's shiny um the resin's already impregnated in here. So we know the weight of this ply before it goes onto the mold. And there's going to be a, a resin, a certain percentage of resin that's going to flow out. Generally, it's about uh, 7 to 8%. Um, so that's it. And the weight's going to stay the same. We, we weigh, the, we weigh the, the structure before it goes in. So this is the crude structure with... Got, we, we weigh it. It's like, okay, we know that weighs. That's within the range before it goes in with the resin. And then it comes out of the mold like this. It's molded. And you take 6 to 7% up to 8. You reduce that, and this is what we're left with. So we're left. So it's going to be a very uniform paddle. Now, the only other place we may add a little bit of weight, and what we're real careful, is when we add our, our cosmetics to it, right? So we're going to add our cosmetic. The, the grips are going to always weigh pretty much the same. So that's how we're able to keep our tolerance extremely tight. And because you see this, these are air nozzles where we pressurize each one of these. Uh, I mean, the, the, the entire paddle is pressurized internally. We also, if we look inside here, you see this yellow or whitish it looks like on the camera. That That is a... It's a special material that it's it, once it reaches 130 degrees Celsius, it expands instantaneously, and it goes from its original size, 70 to 80 times its original size. So if you start off with this piece, um, with this size already, and then you you expand that 80 times each one of these, you can just imagine the tremendous amount of pressure that goes in our presses. If you look at the uh, the cylinder for the hydraulic cylinder on the it's about this, this big diameter and it's super heavy because there's so much pressure um, created. So what that does is when we pressurize it internally, you can see this paddle, this is right out of the mold. So it's very smooth. Um, I mean, it's got a almost a glass finish to it because we, we polish our molds and everything. So um, it's going to come out looking and, uh, really strong. Then we apply yeah, versus, uh, it. Yeah, and then we apply the cosmetic, and we're we're trying good. to get them. We're trying to get there's some kind of like ghost almost like. Uh, ah. Oh, where you can see the maybe the ribs. 
Uh, not not that. There's just there's some a design element like, I mean, it's just it's a beautiful paddle. I mean, design wise too. I mean, um, but there's this, and it has a little bit of um, almost an embossed feel to it. But there's some. It is I, some I black some what black uh, lines that run all over it that I can't pick up on the camera really very well. Oh, I, I know what you're trying to show, right? That ghosting kind of, or ghosted kind of lines right. through it. But, uh, well, I'll tell you our process for that. A lot of when when you build a paddle like the honeycomb, the the process on a honeycomb paddle generally what they do is they have a printer. It's a, a laser printer that that cures the ink instantly with a UV light, so it runs back and forth, and they're actually printing that on. On our paddles, this, this is actually paint. And if you guys are really want to see the process, look at uh, water transfer paints. A lot of times you'll see them in rims. What they do is you float the decal over water, and um, this is printed onto a paper, then you dip the paper, the paint lifts off the surface, and it sort of floats in there. You come in, you pick up, and then you place the the paint right on onto your substrate or, or the part here. And prior to this step here, we have to apply a coating to it. So then the, the chemical sort of evaporate from the surface of the paddle. And then with the, the, the ink on the surface, then that bonds together. So then it becomes part of the paddle. So that little sort of raised surface that you talk about, that yeah. is the thickness of the paint, actually. <laughs> and uh, that's, gotcha. the, that's what you feel, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you can kind of feel it a little bit, but. Uh, yeah, well, very, very little. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's very, yeah. Yeah, about the uh -huh. thickness of the paint. And, um, yeah, but I mean, it's the process and that's why we can get that really nice detail. It's not yeah. a laser print rather, but it, the, I mean, it's just a, Really, really well crafted paddle. I mean, so there's, you yeah. know, in terms of technology and things, I mean, it's just a beautiful structure all the way through. Yeah. I mean, that just, I mean, it's very bold, obviously. Like, the paint looks looks fantastic on it. Um, talk a little bit about the edges, because I know um, when I posted this, a few people had concerns, you know, they're like, oh, it doesn't have an edge guard on it. What if it gets, you know, you hit it on the edge or, you know, other, because we, we've seen edgeless paddles in the past, or I don't even know if that term is, whatever, whatever. No, we've it, seen and you're, paddles that out an edge guard in the past yeah. and they chipped up or they broke or they it yeah. didn't work, because, I think. Um, because, edgeless totally paddles, different. because edgeless paddles in the past were essentially a honeycomb paddle. And what they did is they took like a bondo or a filler and just sort of fill this this part in. It looked like an edgeless piece, or they might have coated it with a another thin piece of graphite or something like that. But essentially, it was filled in with uh, bondo, right? Yeah. To some, to some everybody, or mm -hmm. uh, a polyurethane um, paste that they use as well. Um, so what would happen was when you would hit the ground, it obviously it didn't adhere very well to it. So yeah. Then it began to sort of chip off, and, and they always up. they always fell apart. Like right, the, the 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 face would get distorted, like just they'd get ruined. You'd hit them on the ground, they'd be right. destroyed. So. Because up until our paddles, the gearbox paddles with the solid core span technology, which is this, before this, everything was made exactly the same way. So they try to mm -hmm. you know disguise the edges, or even now, there's some molded paddles out there. Um, they, they say they're molded, but it's still a honeycomb, and then they, they mold like a carbon fiber edge. This one, you know, I'll try to get in here as close as I can, but you can see the thickness um, right here. That thickness there, that is all carbon fiber. So that, that edge goes all the, way, all the way through here. So that is going to be a crazy hard edge. <laughs> I, don't, I wish I had... But we always do this, this sort of test where we bang on it here. But you can Joel, see it's going to be yeah. the structure, and, and um, you're not going to – I mean, you can't exceed its, its strength limit, but it's going to – you're going to have to pound that really, really yeah. hard. Now, one of the things you do want to be careful with is if you're a person that goes and scrapes the ground consistently, consistently, you could yeah. eventually grind through – 
a hole through like the the edge but even if you did it wouldn't affect the play of the rest of the paddle yeah. um, because yeah. uh again the, the whole structure goes around the perimeter of the of the paddle so therefore you're not going to uh really change the play characteristics now one of the things we do say is to apply a little bit of uh tape or protective tape edge guard tape um, and only use it as a warning so once you wear through the tape take it off or, or put another piece in there just use that as your guide is like hey if i'm kind of because you don't want to grind into the composite you want to just wear away the the tape and, sure. and, and preserve your your paddle um now if you're playing indoors on wooden floors don't start fine yeah. No, yeah you're gonna be fine but there's some surfaces out there that have the sanded, um, uh, have some sand in, in the paint. That could eventually wear through, but I mean, it's gonna take quite a few hits before you, yeah. you know, wear through through the paddle. And then the, the, there are some people out there, I've seen it uh, a couple of times where they hit the bar, maybe they're stretching and they drag the paddle, you know, they're just like dragging the paddle through the, the, the floor. So. I mean, that's just like taking a file and just filing the edge off. So yeah. you got to just, that's the only concern. Um, in future paddles, we are addressing yeah. that. So we'll, we'll, sure. we'll um, have something that's going to either be you guys, or You guys or do have, uh, and you guys do make uh, edge tape, I've seen on your website. We do, yes. So. And I actually, I did have a question that I said I would get to from Georgia Laura, and she said okay. she would like some fun colors in the edge guard tape. So, oh, that's our tape. <laughs> that's that's well, the request. So maybe okay, maybe no, imagining no, no, the colors right. of the battle or I something. totally agree. I don't, I don't know. know if you guys have seen uh, Joey Farias out there, but he, um, if you want to, I mean, you could get the, the the regular like a protective tape, and there's actually a uh, like a almost a three quarters of an inch or half inch wide electrical tape. You can buy yeah. like, a lot of different colors. People do um, yeah. just put that electrical tape on for fun. Yeah, it, it will help protect, but it it'll give it some some cool color, and you can play around yeah. with that. Yeah, it looks it the. Uh, I wish I could show you like Dave Mullen is watching, and he put um, the neon one. Like he had the neon green. Like uh, oh okay, one of the I think he had the GX six Power Series uh, seven point eight, and he found a tape on Amazon that matched that perfectly oh, that, that color. color perfectly and it looks just hot to have that i mean it looks like it you like you guys made it that way i, oh, I wow. actually i wish i had mine i still had i had like red tape on on my control series i had blue on my power series oh okay uh, i took it off because i was doing some kind of like balance point like swing weight trying to oh okay figure stuff out so i took that off i wish i still had it on there but it, it can turn out really sharp if you just take a little time and it um can looks look yeah have fun with it just like you said so yeah also you know let me touch on a quick point uh, for the people that are watching that uh, a lot of times they're saying hey what about um is it legal for me to put on bumper tape definitely is so you uh you can put on i believe you cannot go past the half inch don't quote me on that but i believe it, it, the the tape cannot go past half inch into the face but there is part, you can read the rule, it's on the USAP. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so you can add tape to it. Uh, some people, oh no, but you know, the rules say you cannot, not true. Uh, the latest, uh, look in there, you can add uh, tape right right on top. Nice, yeah. So, yeah, we're getting lots mm -hmm. of lots of comments about colors. Yeah, and... okay. we'll, we'll work on, we can definitely make all kinds of colors. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're definitely going to work on making it fun. So I had a question, and this is like mine, and I don't have engineering. Oh, oh, he lost you just for a second, but I was trying to get rid of a comment. Kind of freaked out, <laughs> thinking I deleted you there. But um, so my question is: when the USAPA tests like deflection, how exactly are they testing? You you mentioned like um, when you said percussion. Did you just mean like the sound or is it actually that percussive, like the flex of the surface and rebound off of that you're getting? Or is there a difference between how they measure deflection 
I, I, am I phrasing this question in a yes, understandable yes, way? Are, but, um, when I was referring to center of gravity or center of percussion, yeah. I was referring to um, the mass of the entire paddle, and there's a center point that you're going to push on that if I push, for example, a little bit up, it's going to want to rotate. If I put it right exactly in that center of percussion, the whole paddle is going to go back straight. Now, gotcha. Uh, to answer your question, the deflection test, the, the USAPA um, applies a load in the center of the paddle with two supports underneath, spaced, I believe, it, they're like five inches apart, uh, the support, and then um, they apply 30 pounds. So this, when you apply the load uh, at about a half inch, right in the around the sweet spot, it cannot deflect more than five thousandths of an inch, which is absolutely meaningless in my in my point of view because you're saying i cannot deflect this more in one of the earlier tests um they used to have just a dial and they would kind of wait and then they would drop a 25 pound weight you know on, on top i was like guys that's you know measuring five thousandths of an inch with that sort of uh <laughs> it's no, a bit not accurate. Like, oh my gosh you know like, that, it's crazy but um a few years after, um, now they've got a, a test laboratory that we send all our paddles to. So they, they have very precise equipment, which we everybody in the manufacturing, you know, is very happy that they, they took it away from themselves and they yeah. go and, and send it to an independent laboratory. Now, does this deflection test really mean anything in pickleball? Probably not. The other one there, uh, what I think that's more important is if you would sort of fix the handle to a, a vice or, or fix it somehow and then you come in and maybe drop a, a, a weight to see how much flex or energy would return back or or, or take and, and then do a sort of a bend test where you apply a load and say okay the whole paddle bends a certain way so yeah but but even if you bend it a certain way you can um, take other materials and make it more lively in, but in pickleball, to be honest, nobody really wants a super hot paddle. They're, they're more concerned about having, you know, soft and control. I mean, there is a balance of that, how fast you want or how hard you want to hit it. Because, But you also want the paddle to, to bite or, you know, be able to put spin on the ball. Which brings me to a point, the reason as to, you know, we, we talked about the paddles now, the honeycomb going thick. Well, whenever you have a thick paddle like that, well, now all of a sudden – you're moving more volume when it comes to rotation and, and you're trying to put topspin. So moving more volume, it's not necessarily that you have more air resistance. I mean, it may come into play very well. If little. you're swinging but, hard. You yeah, know, I mean, it's got to be so hard to measure that. But now the volume, now you're moving, rotating more, more volume around. That has more of an effect. So we can take an 8.5 paddle or 7.8 with a thin frame now this rotation is going to be so quick. So now you're able to impart probably 20, 30% more spin on the ball. So you can drive it harder, but it has so much more rotation that the ball is going to drop toward the end of the, before it goes out in the court. So you can now actually maybe hit your drives a little bit harder or in the kitchen, you hit a little bit lower, put a lot of top spin on the ball, get that over the, over the net and it will drop in the kitchen. Because that's yeah. that's just what Joey needs is more top spin. That's <laughs> right. Thanks, well, thanks, thanks a lot, Rafa. Was, yeah, right. Well, he was that was one of the things he was looking. It's a for. tremendous he amount of top spin, me, and so you know, you know, get a paddle that has more top spin. I was like, absolutely, you know that, and that was one of the, the cool things. So, you know, being able to generate more spin on the ball is not necessarily how much roughness on the surface you have. Mm -hmm. But it really has more to do how quick you can rotate this, this paddle. So having these thinner frames, it's going to really allow you to impart and in, in, in more spin on, on that ball because it's going to rotate uh, along this axis much faster mm. uh, along here or, or this this rotation. <laughs> Joey's Joey's watching. He's he's, oh, right. he's there. He is. He's making sure that you're getting everything right right now. You know, I, I, I'm sure he's he gave notes and uh probably give you that chart too um <laughs> but uh so let me ask you because we're hitting um uh what's uh, what's next for you guys i mean where are you guys pushing i mean i know you're not you're not somebody who's going to stay 
still with things you're, you're always looking for a newer way better way um what is kind of the direction that you guys are heading if you you know without giving away too much maybe yeah, without too much i'm going to say faster paddles <laughs> so they're going to be you know yes. much more okay. faster paddles same thing same weights everything they're going to maneuver fast you know they're going to uh uh, we're going to probably customize more shapes for people that uh, we're getting more requests in terms of, Hey, um, more blade type, uh, longer, shorter handles, this, that, whatever we can do within the parameters of the rules, we're definitely going to play around with that. And then also there's materials, there's, um, you know, we can probably still work quite a bit to enlarge the, the sweet spot more, make it more forgiving, um, uh, the way the sound, uh, well, let me touch on that guys. I know that mm. there's probably a lot of people who played with our older GX fives and some of our older paddles. Um, one of the things that we did uh, from today's GX five and a GX six model compared to last year and some of our previous um, models, we've actually modified the sound significantly. Um, so, our earlier GX5 paddles, um, what what they they had the same construction but had a different sound. And some people didn't mind it. A lot of people did. They said, "Well, it just it sounds hollow or doesn't feel like my like a honeycomb paddle." So that I would say probably you know it, it deterred a lot of people from they like the way our paddle fit, but they just couldn't get past the sound. So yeah, we we worked on that. I worked. Uh, day and night for almost a couple of years to get the right the right sound and and now we've got the sound and the feel with the control and the power and um, so now we can really get into uh, other manipulate other areas of the paddle to to give you different uh, play characteristics okay that uh so I've got I, I don't know if we can actually if people can actually hear it but I'm gonna try at least so Let's I've try. got I've got a Dura. I've got an old GX5. Uh, Joey gave me this one. Actually, I was this was personally given to me by Joey Farias. So kind of special that way. So let me see if you can hear the the sound this one will make. Is it picking up at all? It is. Okay. So there's the old one, and here's a newer uh, 845 Power Series GX5. So, so to me, I don't know if you can tell a different. It sounded a lot lower frequency to me. The the second one, it, it just is. didn't have the ping. It didn't have that like thud. It's a lot cleaner. Like, so I mean, I didn't really mind it so much, like the sound of the old one. But I know it was actually getting frustrating to me when I'd hand them the my demo paddle and they'd be like, "Oh, it sounds like cardboard." And I'm like, "But what is it? Well, who cares? What does it play like?" Um, but you know, I. I I, I, I do prefer the new one, though. I do prefer the sound of the new one, whatever you guys did. To I'll be honest. I do, too. Yeah. <laughs> Joey, yeah. Joey used to say, Rafael, bring that sound back because yeah. it feels like I'm mishitting the ball all the time, and my opponents don't know whether it's coming 100 miles an hour or 120. <laughs> because he doesn't, it, it make a, again, again he, doesn't, he doesn't need to be sneakier. He doesn't need more topspin. Like, stop doing good paddles <laughs> for the guy. He doesn't need anything else. He's good. Yeah. So, uh, hey, um, so Rafa, uh, Rafa, some of the people were asking you about balls. Would you ever make pickle balls? We actually do. We we have two. We have an indoor ball and an outdoor. Oh. We don't really promote it uh, or advertise it. Um, we use it mainly for um, uh, to provide for events or tournaments. Um, the ball business, I, I think. I'd like to dominate the the paddle side first, and then once we we do that, then we can sort of move on to um, uh, we can move on to to other uh, other parts of the uh, or, or or other products of you know the pickleball line. Right now, we uh, we you know we get we have bags, we have the eyewear, we have the the more of the accessories that people need. I think to get into the balls, there's a couple brands who. Are already um, pretty well established. Yeah, you go up against that. I mean, I don't think that's the industry a, really needs a lot of competitors in that standpoint. And and that's a lot of legwork, I think, to get. You know, people don't understand how much uh, just 
you know, getting them into the hands of tournament directors, it's a huge, it's a huge, huge marketing undertaking to, you know, to have that ball. Even if you can create a great ball, often money kind of dictates, you know, which ball is used or whatever. So it's anyway, I don't want to get into the yeah, no, the, I mean, the underbelly. There, of things, definitely, right? there there is opportunities on the ball because yeah. you know you've got people who look for quiet balls in different communities. Then you've got the mm -hmm. tournament players who. Um, you know, most prefer the Duro ball um, mm -hmm. on the pro side, and then you get to some amateur tournaments, and they could go either way. I mean, the, mm -hmm. what is it, the Franklin right now? I'd say that's a really nice ball. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's good for all play. Um, the pros probably think it's a little bit soft, but so you've got different markets for 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 different um, products. But we'll we'll eventually look into yeah. it more in the future. For now, I want to focus on paddles. Yeah. Well, if you do what I'm looking for, the holy grail to me would right. be a dura. Would be a dura. I don't care if it cracks. I just don't want the ball to go out of round as so often. Oh, you know? right. That's the only issue with a dura is like you don't know when to stop using it. It's like oh, it's a little weird. It's a little wonky. It has some wobble to it, but you don't want to throw it away just yet because it's not broken. But it's <laughs> right. bugging. But it's bugging the crap out of you when you're like oh, it hit that soft spot in the ball. And we're not going to retire it yet. And then some. Finally, someone steps on it, and you create a new ball. But right, anyway. and then you just <laughs> so it can it can crack, Raphael, but it can't go out of round. That's why I, I don't want the out of round thing going on anymore. Right. So I, well, what, can, what I, can I get an amen from future? people in the comments? Just throw that up there. Give me some love for that comment. I appreciate <laughs> it. But uh, all right. So uh, let's see if. Guys, if you have any other questions for, for Raphael, um, please uh, let me know right now because we are getting close to an hour and I kind of want to wrap things up. Um, I'm getting so I'm going to throw this up just because it, it makes me feel good that Jerry says this. So it says that's a genius idea. I've got some amens in the house for that. So there you go. Three amens. That's good enough. Um, so... Uh, just as just as a side note, Raphael, um, next week on the show, I'm going to do more of a product oriented, like kind of review and walk through of things. And we're going to be giving away a, a Gearbox Alley bag actually on the show. Oh, so, nice. um, that, you know, they don't make, they don't just make great paddles. I've, I've done it. I have done a, a walkthrough actually last week of this, uh, of the Gearbox backpack. That's um, nice. Bag. It's a great backpack. Obviously, it travels well. It's got my airline tag on it still. Um, this was my overhead bin bag that I took with me to uh, – where did I go? Uh, I don't know. I think this was Nationals. Yep, Nationals. That's where I took that with me last year. So, um, But the Alley bag, another great bag. I haven't seen it yet, but it looks really nice online, so I'm going to be walking through that with people and giving away – um, one of those on next week's show, just so you guys know. Um, can I? Can I? Yeah. Oh, uh, interject here a little bit. Yeah. For everybody watching, tell all your friends. We've got this amazing deal going right now, where if you buy a paddle, or if you play racquetball still, or get out there, um, a paddle or a racket, any racket, um, we're giving away a free alley bag. It's an eighty-five dollar value. So. It's a smoking uh, deal right now. We're doing it. You know, obviously, the entire situation around the country, it's going to help us. We're trying to get our dealers. We're uh, trying to stimulate some people out there to even take a look at our brand. Look at our paddles, guys. I mean, it, it's really uh, some tremendous uh, product. Uh, I know um, these new GX5 and GX6 are just, uh, people are really, really enjoying it. Yeah. They, they add a lot of new shots to your game. So don't be afraid to over, you know, exaggerate the top spin, cutting the ball. And, you know, they, they're a lot of fun once you, you know, start yeah. starting all that spin in there. And I, and I think you guys can see just if you watch this, like all the technology that goes into it, you know, uh, well, Okay, I'm I'm gonna back up. Not say what I was gonna. I was just gonna like compare like price point and the technology that you get and the work that goes into it compared to some some paddles that are that are way up there in in price but don't offer the same. I don't know. Like the quality is when you when you've had one of these in your hand, the quality is second to none. Like, and 
you know, I've, I have all, all the demos and I bring them to my tennis center locally and there's never been a more like universally loved paddle that I've, that I've put out there. Like I bring in new paddles all the time for people as a paddle geek, you know, and they love play testing stuff and they get hit or miss kind of comments. Some people like them, some people don't. Um, I mean, a hundred percent of the people liked the gearbox paddles, you know, and, and several of them bought them. So just as a, you know, and could you mention your, your demo program? Would you want to bring that up to folks? Yeah. Cause... Yeah. I mean, that's another cool thing we've got if we're, for $20. Uh, we'll send out up to four demos, um, for a week. So, uh, what you do is you, you go online, you, you, um, get gearbox sports. Hey, we got a fan there. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so you, you get the, um, the, the four paddles of your choice. You keep them for a week, and then um, there's a return label. The twenty dollar really covers part of the shipping going there, and and the shipping going back. You do get a five dollar credit um, hmm. toward the purchase if you decide to purchase. You cannot purchase the the demos, guys. Um, everybody, hey, can I just keep this one? I really like it. No, those are kind of going into a, into a rotation, and right. we'd rather you have a brand new paddle. Well, but again, the the tolerances are so minuscule. Oh yeah, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna get, get that paddle that you're gonna get right. pretty much that paddle just shinier, you know, <laughs> not, not beat up. So brand brand spanking new, you can pull so, the all the yep. labels off yourself. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you know, and, and on the comment of you know, you mentioned price points and um, our our paddle is actually you know under one hundred and fifty dollars, and with the amount of work and technology that goes into it, it's really quite quite a piece of engineering. And it's a, it's a, it's a steal. And this paddle is going to last you a long time. You know, a lot of the honeycomb paddles, and that was part of the reason as to why I came in. I, you know, you hear this paddle degradation where, you know, the first month is going to play one way, second month, and then it just the 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 honeycomb paddles begin to break down. And then uh, on the pro side, I know those guys are changing either every month or every couple of months. So it's almost a retraining of God. I got a new paddle, so I have to sort of get used to because this it's a hot paddle uh, where this one, the way it plays today, it's going to play like that for years. It's not yeah. going to change uh, throughout. So yeah. a lot of really good benefits and, and strengths to the design and technology of the paddles. Yeah. I, and one more thing, I, I just want to mention this too, um, that somebody else gave me this idea, but you know how the, the Franklin plays a little softer and the Dura is harder. Um, or, you know, windy conditions versus calm conditions. Yeah. Um, you know, people started saying, well, I use the control series paddle when I'm using the Dura and I need a little more softness from the paddle or, or it's calm, you know, but in the wind, they might switch to use the, the Joey signature edition, you know, like the power series, um, with the Franklin or in windy conditions. And I thought, you know, that's kind of interesting. So I tried it myself. And I feel like because the construction is so similar and consistent, I had no problem switching like back and forth. That would that was a, a new concept to me. I don't think it would really work with a lot of other brands and just switching shapes or you know, it's it's a rare thing to be able to take the same shape and balance. That's really critical, I think, more than more than the shape is like the balance and have the exact same balance just and paddle essentially with just more power or less power, you know, and being able to go back and forth was really kind of neat. Um, it opens a lot of avenues to, you know, indoor play, for instance, even, you know, going from indoor to outdoor, you got a different paddle, but it's and the ball, the, same. the ball. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, just wanted to introduce that, that comment. In, well, uh, in, I mean, uh, to people, a, lot in our, a lot of our customers actually buy the paddles because of that. And, and we, we tell them, um, you know, if you're playing against the wind, you're using the uh, the power series, and when the wind is behind you, so you don't have to change your stroke so much. Yeah. Um, you're actually trying to, because that's one of the things, right? You make adjustments and you're trying to like get the ball over the net and drop it, etc. Well, here you're almost able to just keep the same uh, same stroke and same motion, and but what you do is you you change your your paddle. It's almost like adjusting string tension on a tennis racket or a racquetball racket, right? Depending on altitude or, you know, how, how the ball has expanded, you, you adjust string tension. Well, there's no strings in here. So essentially what we've done is made these paddles behave a little different 
to adjust to those conditions. So you're exactly right. I mean, part of the design was in mind to uh, look at the balls and, and also look at the uh, at the wind conditions, whether it's against you or, or with you. And, and, you know, there's less adjustment from your stroke. Because, I mean, once you're playing, the, the last thing you want to think about, oh, my God, am I overswinging and am I underswinging is hey, you just want to kind of keep the same sort of motion and flow and, you know, be smooth out there. And we're trying to provide that equipment so you don't have to really have all these crazy things go through your head as you're playing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I've always got crazy things going through my head. While I'm playing, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> but less of them is good. So, uh, well, Raphael, I think uh, I think we'll wrap it up there. But um, I really appreciate having you on the show. Is there anything else that you want to say before we sign off? Um, no, I think. Uh, uh, well, yes. I mean, the last thing is. Go ahead. Just let you guys know there's a huge difference, guys, between molded paddles uh, with their, you know, that are molded, internally pressured, like our our solid span technology, like like these. You can see the rift versus uh, molded, even a, a honeycomb structure like this. Um, you can mold these as well, and and but it's not going to have the same play characteristics. It's not going to uh, the durability, the way uh, the paddle behaves. It's going to be quite different. So with molded unidirectional fiber paddles, you're going to have tons of uh, design capability. And you'll see in the next year, a couple of years to come, the amount of change and things that we'll, we'll push for um, in, in the sport. Sure. Well, thank you. And guys, uh, I think this has been a really informative uh, interview that has a lot of value just beyond, you know, promoting Gearbox, but just knowledge of the of construction of paddles in and of itself. So I'm going to make sure to upload this to YouTube. I'll probably do that tomorrow, but um, that's something I haven't used very much at this point yet, but I want this to be uh, more widely available to people. So please make sure you check out Paddle Geek on YouTube and, uh, you know, subscribe to that page. I promise you that new stuff is coming very soon. Some of the old stuff is um, <clears throat> a little embarrassing. <laughs> my, I think my interview skills have gotten better, but uh, anyway, uh, thanks again, Raphael, for uh, for joining me tonight. Um, uh, this has been just fantastic. I've loved, uh, you know, I, I want to pick your ear, your brain more. Pick your ear. I don't want to pick your ear. Sorry, yeah. it's getting it's getting a late, <laughs> a little bit late. But you pick your brain about some of the this stuff a little bit more uh, another time. So maybe maybe we can have you on again at some point. But uh, yeah, no, I really up, uh, appreciate the appreciate opportunity it. to explain, you know, what's different about our product. So. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And thanks to everybody who logged in and had questions. And, you know, please try our demo program. Check out our products. They, they are quite quite unique and different. And we're going to be out there pushing for new technologies and, and, and new ways to evolve the sport. Excellent. All right. Thanks, everybody. Hey, you have a great Good night. Good night.